Fever after dental work, such as tooth extraction, is common and can occur a few hours after the procedure. This is usually a low-grade fever that the body develops as it tries to fight off any potential infection and initiate the healing process. The fever should typically subside in a few days. However, if it persists or becomes high, it could be a sign of a more serious issue, such as a wound infection or, in extreme cases, endocarditis, a condition that can occur when bacteria from the mouth enter the bloodstream through the wound and reach the heart's inner lining. This is especially true if the tooth extraction was particularly invasive or the tooth was severely infected. After dental work, it's normal for your child to experience discomfort or a low-grade fever less than 38.8 degrees Celsius. Check with your GP to see if your child can alternate between Panadol and Nurofen every three hours to help manage the pain and fever. Ensure you follow the instructions on the package if you're only giving one of these medications. If your child still requires pain control after two or three days, it's important to contact your healthcare provider. Maintaining oral hygiene is critical after a dental procedure. You can start normal brushing and flossing in the morning after the procedure. However, it's essential to be gentle when brushing around the extraction site to avoid disrupting the healing process. It's also essential to prevent your child from injuring their mouth while it's still numb from the anesthetic. Avoid spicy, salty, sour, and crunchy foods that could irritate the healing gums or get stuck in the tooth sockets. Your child should also avoid sucking from a straw or spitting forcefully for a week after extraction to prevent bleeding. Regular follow-up care ensures your child's mouth heals properly after the procedure. Your pediatric dentist will advise you about any necessary follow-up care. Routine visits to the kid's dentist every six months are generally recommended. This information is based on general guidelines and might not apply to every individual case. It's important to consult with your healthcare provider for personalized advice.